What's going on guys? Today we are doing part one of our cage build series. I've talked to quite a few of you on different forums and everything, trapping pages, that sort of thing. I told you guys I'm gonna be doing a cage build, show you guys how the I make the cages I use for my trapping season. So we're starting that today. Let me show you what we've got as far as materials. This is what we're gonna be building. Let me show you that real quick. We building a cage trap, just like this. Real simple style door, guillotine style. You set the camera down right here in front. Real simple. Animal walks in, hits the pan in the back, and the door drops. Super simple cage, real easy design, and super easy to build. What we're gonna be using is 14 gauge one inch by one inch wires 36 inches tall which is great because it's the same great because it's the same depth of the cage we're going to be using 16 gauge square tubing 16 gauge rectangular tubing this is sorry this is three quarter inch by one and a half inch the square tubing is half inch by half inch also 16 gauge and then we have formed steel i got two bars of this you only need one and you actually only need about three feet for one of these cages i bought a whole bunch of extra as you can see because i'm going to be building multiple cages but i'm going to film the build of one of them i also have eighth inch cold rolled uh steel wire uh, this is what i use for the uh, wire on the side for this piece right here all the rest the uh rebar pieces i scrounge um, I get those from uh, after uh, the elections go through and everything I collect up rebar and everything like that makes it real easy um, the sheet metal is actually I've got some right there with my other cages as you can see back there that's just some old shelving so I use uh, just reuse uh, old shelving things like that for the sheet metal real simple and a great way to save some money the J clips are right here these are J clips from Ace. Uh, they're about six dollars a bag. The pliers, uh, it's a one-time buy, uh, so that you'll have these for building the cages. They're $14. Uh, in total, as far as just materials and everything that I had to purchase to make this was about $45. Uh, one of these cages, if you buy it commercially, there's a lot of different companies that make them out there. Uh, you can just look them up online, look up uh, guillotine style cage traps. Um, it's going to run you a ballpark, 100 bucks just for the cage itself. And then whatever the shipping costs are, I've seen it upwards of 90 to $100 for shipping on these things. Um, so the tally goes up quickly if you're buying them commercially. Yes, you're going to get uh, some sort of a guarantee with them. You know, if something breaks, they'll, they, they repair it or whatever. But if you are like me and you want to save some money and you don't want to spend a thousand dollars to get eight cages and you'd rather just spend about i don't know 250 or so dollars and build eight cages then this is the way to go we're going to get started here i'm going to start with uh cutting out the wire for uh the first cage it's going to be a total of 64 inches uh, as far as that uh, i'm going to be going on the side like i said it's 36 inches tall and uh we're going to cut out 64 inches of it so that we can start making the cage portion of it. Um, the rest of this is all for different portions of it. The square tubing is for the door pieces here, top and bottom, just makes it nice and square. Uh, the rails on the side, the guide rails are actually this tubing that I just split down the middle. I use about two foot of it. And then this uh, form tubing, or the, sorry, the, uh, the steel form, the uh, 90 degree angle here. I use back here and I just weld it right onto that piece of uh, guide rail and then I just use bits and pieces of uh, other metal to tack this on so that the cage is attached to it but we'll go all into that during the build we're gonna get going here and uh, let me cut out this uh, wire and then I'll talk about more of that all right guys so we got our 64 inches cut all right 64 inches long again 36 inches tall what we're going to be doing is I'm going to count over uh, nine and I'm going to fold it. And the way I'm going to fold it is I'm going to set this two by four on it like this, fold the wire up and then use my rubber mallet over here 
to make the first 90 degree angle. And I'm going to go over 18 and then 9 and then 18 and that'll make the box. Now obviously you're going to end up with some extra if you guys are following along with the math. I should have about 9 or 10 inches of wire left over on the side. That I'm going to cut in half and that's going to become the back of the cage. So I'll show you guys how we do that once we get everything else kind of folded into shape. So we've got our basic shape of our cage, just like this. You got your top here, your sides, the bottom, and we've got all this extra material right up here at the top. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this off, and this is gonna become the back of the cage. And then whatever is left over from this, we're gonna save and use that for another uh, cage build uh, for one of the other cages. Like I said, I bought a whole bunch of stuff uh, to build multiple cages but right now I'm just building the one and showing you guys how I build the one. And then from there on out, um, I'll just use the extra material for other cages. Uh, you can also use this for the front of the door if you choose to do that. Uh, you can just wire it onto the front bars of the cage and that'll keep anything from getting out the front if you wanna use it for the front. And then you just have a total of 64 inches total for the entire cage. Cut the back of the cage off. That's gonna go right here like this. And then we'll wrap it up and it'll link in just like that. What we're going to do here is we're going to take these two pieces and we're going to slide them together. And I cut these so that these pieces are long. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use these little pieces that are sticking up here to wrap back on itself. And this will help strengthen this seam. Alright? So I'm going to do that all the way down the edge. And then I'm going to start J clipping and I'll do J clips down as well. And so it'll double up on the strength of this. These are frameless cages that I'm building. And it seems to be kind of the industry standard. What everybody's going to is doing the frameless cages. Uh, it seems to flex really well when the animals are hitting the sides of it. I've got some great uh, trail cam footage of uh, catching a cat in one of these cages and it fighting the cage. And the cages stay all in one piece. Sorry about the dogs in the back neighbor's dogs are out. Anyway, um, we're going to be, uh, it'll flex really well with the animal fight in the cage and then that way it doesn't break. If you have the ones with the frames, it gives something solid for them to push against and eventually they'll bow out the wire and break out of the cage. So we're going to get to going on that. So, what we've done, I can just show you real quick. All I was doing was just twisting those tail ends around the wire to attach wherever I had those tail ends sticking out. All the way along there. And right down here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go through and using these uh, clip pliers and these little J clips. See them right there. All we're gonna be doing, set a J clip in, 
right up against the edge of the wire here wrap it and give it a crank and what that does that's just gonna attach those edges and we're gonna do that all the way around you put the short end where the double clips are the double end of the pliers and then you put the uh, skinny piece up at the top and then the J sits in there just like that And it just wraps in and clips in. And we're gonna do that all the way around the edge here. And then we're gonna go all the way down that side on the other end on the side of the cage. And we're gonna put on these J clips all the way around. Alrighty guys, so we've got the cage frame itself pretty much done. Got this here, you can see we did the little wire wraps and then we added on those J hooks and clamped them down. All the way down, every single one of those uh, squares has at least one on it. On the corners, you can see I've double wrapped up on these with the, uh, with the wire there. Uh, from one from the back and one from the front here wrapped around that corner good and tight so it's not going anywhere and I threw the J hooks on there as well same over here just got the J hooks on here nice and tight wrap those up again wrapping the wire same thing all the way down up here I, I uh, put two of the J hooks just because I don't have the wire wraps so on these corners where I don't have wire wraps, I put two of these, it makes the corners just that, that much stronger. And then single J hooks all the way around, just like that. And that gives us our shape of the cage. Just like that. So next time, we're gonna do the door. I'm gonna show you guys how to build this whole door system here. And I'm doing this in parts, just so you kind of get an idea. Uh, and you're able to have time to build these because it does take some time. Um, but we'll do the door and the rails and everything. Um, depending on how long that takes, we may get into uh, putting in the pan and the uh, trigger mechanism. There's a lot of different ways you can do the trigger mechanism. We'll go over a few different ways you can do it. And then you can just kind of decide on your own if that's what you want to do or, or not. Again, a lot of these pieces I get uh, for free. If you can, sal if you can uh, salvage old stuff and use uh, old rebar, um, use uh, old, uh, old pieces of metal and everything, like the stop block down at the bottom, that's just old garden and their pathway metal I have that's eighth inch by about four or five inch, and I just cut uh, sections of that off um, to make the, uh, some of the other pieces and fabricate my own stuff. Um, a lot of it's just stuff I have just laying around and I and I utilize that stuff and it saves you a lot of money Same with the sheet metal for the trip pans. Uh, like I said, I'm using some old uh, Old shelving uh, Pieces that are made of a uh, good solid sheet metal So I'll use that for the uh, trip pans and then I don't have to shell out money for uh, fresh uh, Fresh metal because metal is getting expensive all right guys, so that's what we've got going on there. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the build so far. And uh, if you are, or you've got any questions, please uh, comment down below, ask your questions, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, say hi, Drake. 
anyway, um, so yeah, uh, like and subscribe, uh, share the video with your buddies, and uh, again, hope you guys are enjoying it, and we'll catch you down the line.